Hello everybody, this is Danny Faraday, and welcome back to another episode of Time the Tasmania Tiger. Last episode we had completed the final uh, <laughs> trifecta, the final three levels of this game. Alright, all that's left now is to go on to the, the boss, the final, final level, okay? But before we do that, I think we're going to take an episode, kind of chill back, stay here, and we're actually be going to be collecting all of the rainbow scales, okay? So if you guys just want to see where the rainbow scales are, uh, right at the very beginning, I'll just show this map right here, show you where them all are, uh, just, <laughs> I guess go to these spots. But uh, I'm going to be going through each one of these, uh, just collecting them at a reasonable pace. And yeah, we're just going to have a chill time doing this, okay? So there's actually something as we're doing this, uh, I guess I should explain. Well yeah, I guess I'll explain a couple of things about the rainbow scales. So there's 25 of them uh, around this place. They're only here inside the hub world. Uh, you do get something out of it, something kind of cool. And the reason why I waited this long to do it is because you actually cannot collect them all until you finish the third world. Okay. Kind of a eh. personally, uh, I think the prize is a little uh, wasted, a little bit wasted because of how long you have to wait for it, but it's it's still pretty nice, okay? Alright, so we're gonna go do that right now, alright? So yeah, there are 25 of them, I'll just be walking around, collecting them, having a grand old time! And I do kinda recommend getting them. Um, it's nothing too important what you get, but I mean, it, it makes it, it makes the game easier, okay? So yeah, we did collect one already, and I'll go ahead and show you where that was. <laughs> right there. Yeah, uh, there's a rainbow scale, I believe, in every beginning of every mission area, so uh, be aware of that, okay? But uh, let's collect these right now, okay? And as we're collecting these, there are s something I w there is something I want to talk about, all right? It's something I've I've kind of been researching <laughs> uh, so that I can get it prepared for this. Let's talk a little bit about the animals that are in this game, all right? the Australian animals, okay? Because I think it's it's really cool that this game has its own personality like that. I mean, how many other games do you know have... Oh, before we do that, let's go up here. How many other games do you know has, like, a specific uh, culture to it? <laughs> like, the Australian culture. I don't know. I just think that's really cool. But, uh, anyways, as we're doing this, uh, let's get started with Ty. The Tasmanian Tiger. Where's my... I could have swore there's one down here. Oh well. Anyways, Ty the Tasmanian Tiger. He is a uh, thylacine. I believe that's how you pronounce it. I can't reach that. No. Okay. But he's a thylacine. Thylacines are... <laughs> actually extinct. Alright. Uh, they're the largest known marsupials at its time though. Um, of course, like in this game, they were known for their very powerful bites. Uh, there's a nice video, like 9 second video of like the last remaining thi thylacine around in captivity. And jeez man, <laughs> you can see the jaws in that sucker. But anyways, yes, um, they are actually extinct now. The last one died in the 20th century. At least the last known one died in the 20th century. There's still a little bit of, of rumors saying that they're still alive in Tasmania, in Australia, but uh, there's no actual proof of that just yet. It's just kind of like an urban legend. So yeah, <laughs> I don't know, it, the last one, Benjamin kind of died of neglect, so it, it's kind of a sad story. It kind of makes me really sad, but yeah, it was, they were cool little creatures and I liked them a lot. And actually. It, it ties really well with uh, this game anyways, because Ty is essentially the last of his kind, his uh, family. Because the other, his other family is just kind of gone. <laughs> so yeah, I thought that was pretty cool. That they, they kind of add a little bit from the main, from the actual animals they're, they're taking from. They just kind of add a little homages. Homages? I guess that's how you pronounce it. Homage? <laughs> They add some of those every now and then, which I think is cool. Alright, uh, so yeah, that's the title scene. Uh, Maurice, 
Maurice is a bird. <laughs> Did you know that? He's a self sulfur crested cockatoo. Okay. And there's not really much interesting to talk about a cockatoo. Oh, let's go on that side. Yeah, there's not really much to talk about a cockatoo. Uh, they're highly intelligent, which I guess is maybe a similarity to him being the tutorial in this game. They're known for being highly intelligent and also having really annoying um, squawks. <laughs> so I don't know, maybe that's... <laughs> That's supposed to represent his his personality in this game. Uh, I'm not sure though. Don't. Not sure if that's a real thing though. Uh, give me a second. Okay. Julius. Julius is something that's that's pretty interesting. Julius, I'm sure as you guys know, is a koala. And <laughs> I think I find this the most like funny one because in is there another one over here? I guess not. In reality, koalas are extremely stupid. <laughs> there it is. Yeah, there's another one here. Yeah, though, uh, koalas are extremely stupid. Um, I think they're one of the... Let's see. They have the smallest brain in proportion to the weight of their, their body mass. And... Well, uh, yeah, the smallest of any mammal, I believe. And because of that, uh, they do a lot of weird stuff, like for example, if you leave eucalyptus leaves, which is their, their main food source, if you leave it just on the ground, on a plate or something, they won't eat it. Because <laughs> they just don't know what it is, they're, they're too dumb to figure that out. So I think that it's funny and hilarious that they're that dumb. And in this game, uh, Julie is supposed to be the uh, scientist. <laughs> I, just, I just find that really... I, I'm sure they knew what they were doing, and that's really cool. Uh, also, I, I know I've said this in the beginning, but just to reiterate, there's a lot of cases of chlamydia along koalas. They're very uh, chlamydious animals. So, I guess watch out for that. Don't <laughs> don't go fooling around with any koalas, I'll have you know. I guess something bad. I guess you really shouldn't fool around with koalas anyways, but... <laughs> Your choice, I guess. Whatever. <laughs> okay. Um, so yeah, Julius. Uh, Ranger Ken. Ranger Ken is a little bit of a weird one. Because Ranger Ken, now I thought he was something else. I, I, I thought he was like a bear or something. Or some sort of... Um, I don't know, like a wolf or something. But apparently Ranger Ken is actually a... Tasmanian Devil, which, <laughs> if you guys know anything about Tasmanian Devils, they're very small, very uh, kind of aggressive, shy but aggressive creatures. So I'm not really sure why Ranger Ken in this game is this huge, <laughs> muscular, bulking creature. I, I'm not really sure about that. Um, just like Ranger Ken, Tasmanian Devils are known for... Uh, having like white stripes along their chest, so I guess that's the the dead giveaway that he's supposed to be a a Tazzy, Tasmanian Devil. Um, for everything else, I'm not really sure. <laughs> I'm not. There's nothing really that uh, obvious about him that connects him to the real life Tasmanians. Uh, he, he's a yeah, he's a little bit of a weird one. I don't know where he came from. <laughs> okay. Come on, make this! Yes! So I believe there's one in... Yeah, here it is. Alright. Um, okay. What's this gonna do? Okay, sure. Move around. Why don't you? How much are we? Five? Okay. Doing good. Alright. Uh, okay, so let's talk about the enemies real quick. So, of course, we have frill lizards, which are frill lizards. <laughs> Just like in this game, they, they open their frills when they're upset, and they uh, hiss at you. Blue-tongued lizards are the big blue guys. They have blue tongues. <laughs> That's it. Nothing else about them. And, um... Boss Cats. Boss Cats is a, also kind of a neat one. Let's 
see if there's any over here on this one. Boss cast is a cassowary. Cassowaries are. Uh, give me a second. Yes, I did <laughs> write this down, so that's why I'm over here moving stuff. Okay, so cassowaries are the third tallest and second heaviest birds in the world. And funny enough, in um, in Australian culture, they're known as one of the the deadliest, scariest birds. <laughs> so, yeah, don't go messing with no uh, cassowaries. Another interesting thing about them. Well, actually, I should restate that. They're considered the most dangerous birds, but they're actually not that dangerous. It's actually a myth because um, what happened is that a lot of villagers, or a lot of travelers, I mean, that came to Australia would hear from the natives um, kind of calling out this bird, saying how dangerous it was that it, it killed tribal men, stuff like that. When in reality, there's only one known confirmed death from a cassowary. And it was actually a, a young boy that he tried to kill it with a club, so... Yeah, and on, honestly, it was more like defense than anything else. But uh, they're known for having a very large talon on one of their feet. Or on, actually on both of their feet. That can pretty much shred a gut <laughs> or uh, break open arteries and stuff like that. So yeah, it's still pretty dangerous, but you know, they're, they're not like aggressive animals. Not by a long shot. They just kind of get a bad rap. Is there anything over here? I knew it. There we go. Four more. I'm not actually sure where those are. Uh, I do have a... <laughs> I do have a list of them open so I can just go pick them up really easily. But uh, I believe I got in most of the ones that are quite obvious. Probably just have to look this up. But it does... It does make really good sense that uh, Cassowary is the main uh, evil guy in this kind of game. <laughs> I mean, if they're if they're considered just the angriest of the bunch, I mean, <laughs> they make a good enemy, good kids, kids game animal baddie. I just thought that was a really cool thing that they did. Let's see, is there any more over here in Bly Bly? In blah blah. Uh, I don't believe so. This in entrance area always reminds me of DK64. I don't think I've said this before, but it always reminds me of Jungle Japes when you go in and you just see a, a hallway of trees that you just kind of walk around. It always gives me that vibe. See, I got all those behind those, so I think we're good in here. Alright, time to go <laughs> treasure hunting for all those other ones. Here's one. Found it! Cool. There's one more around here, I believe, and uh, the rest are in the new area that we haven't unlocked yet. I'm saving those for last because I just don't want to like open that area, get all the stuff, and just leave. That would be kind of weird. One last creature that I forgot to talk about is uh, the bunyips. Bunyips are actually quote-unquote real mythical creatures. There we go. That's the last one. All right. Uh, they're mythical creatures from Australia, and they're known, they're kind of like an aquatic dog, is how most of them describe them. They have different shapes from time to time, but they're known for being like, sort of like an otter, I guess. <laughs> A giant otter that kills people. So yeah, I'm not really sure. I guess they have tusks, some of them, which is why they have tusks in this game, but it's, it's kind of a stretch. <laughs> I don't really see the aquatic part. But let's open this up. Boop. Hit that with a, a zapperang, and it opens up. Look at that. 24. 25. There it is. <laughs> Had to walk around. 25. Ah, uh, I see you have found the rainbow scales that were scattered across the land. As a reward for your ingenuity, I give you a special bunyip gift. The resilience of a great warrior. 
May you battle well. Okay. I am a resilient warrior. Look at me resilient. So actually what happens is you get two paws now. So yeah, you you get two paws. <laughs> That's really it. <laughs> Alright. Well, uh, I don't know. Uh, I guess it's a good thing to get. But at the same time, you're at a point where the last thing between you and finishing the game is the boss. Uh, which is a level, by the way. It's not just a boss fight. It's actually a, a level that you go through. So I guess it's kind of useful. It's just... I think it would be more useful if you get this, like, maybe towards the middle of the game. Rather than at the almost very end. But, uh, I don't know. That's just me. Maybe it is useful. <laughs> we'll see. Alright. But, uh, I guess it's at this point that we're just gonna end the video here. And in the next episode, we're actually gonna go and do the very next or the very final level I forgot what it's called <laughs> I should probably check it but yeah here we are almost towards the end of the game uh yay I was um never mind I was well I was gonna say that I was hoping to beat this game by this year not meaning to like date these episodes cast pass but uh we might have to go a little bit farther beyond Alright, but anyways, in the next episode, we're going to go to Cass's Pass and get a little bit farther towards the end of this game, the final world. Alright, so thank you guys for watching. This is Danny Faraday, signing off.